How you folks doing? It's uh, Alex Markovides again with Green Revolution. I'm honored and really excited to have uh, the president of the New Jersey Department of Education and the founder of the Willow School with me, Mr. Mark Biedrin. And we're gonna have a conversation about everything from the triple bottom line to uh, life in general and to how we as, a, we as a society, whether you are right wing, left wing, you know, whether you are poor, rich or anything in between, can come together and make a positive difference. More importantly, specifically in education. Uh, the Willow School is, um, I mean, I, I should stop talking and just let Mark go because uh, the, what is the Willow School? What, what have you done here, sir? Okay, so just to be uh, uh, clear, um, yeah. I am the president of the New Jersey State Board of Education, not the department. Okay. So we work in concert and partnership with the Department of Education to set policy, regulation, okay. and um, really set the direction of education for both public and charter schools in New Jersey. That's so, our charge. So the board, you're the president of the board. Correct of education in New Jersey that's correct and then a department of education sort of oversee them sort of like the board we're, of we actually or? work in, in partnership a lot okay. of times you know the, the department does all the legwork and mm. brings it to us and then we have to approve the regulations and and really set the tone and mm. provide a thorough and efficient which is our charge a thorough and efficient education in in for our students in New Jersey thorough and efficient that's what it says in statute okay. so thorough you know, and efficient education. that's our mission yeah. now right. our vision is totally different our vision is so that every child, when they graduate, walk out that door in 12th grade, mm -hmm. has what we call a well-rounded, comprehensive education, mm -hmm. right? Is civic ready, mm -hmm. so what does that mean, right? How do you be civic ready? Look at our current landscape. Are we civic ready as adults? I don't think so. Yeah. Why? Simple, we, didn't, we were never educated to do that. Right. So be civic ready, civic. to really uh, be college and career ready too, okay, yeah. that's good. But right. more importantly, have the skills and dispositions to be life ready. Okay, and what does that mean? So what does that mean is, what are the skills and habits of mind and dispositions mm -hmm. that are what we call transferable and cross-applicable to any career, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. to, to going home and talking to your spouse, mm -hmm. to college, anything, to life. What are those skills? Are they Algebra two? Are they Geometry? Are they, you know, I would say no. I'd say those things are important. Of course. Right, but you know, if you can't communicate if you can't listen, mm. if you can't get in a group of diverse people with diverse ideas and figure out how to come, you know, move forward with one action, and that actually is the definition of communication. It comes from the Latin, to move forward with one action. To move forward, forward with, with one, one action. action. That's what communication that, that's means, That's wonderful. Right? So gonna, if, you're not, if you're not doing that, yeah, perfect. you're not communicating, you're doing something else. Right. And we do a lot of that something else because, mm. you know, you'll see groups of adults, you know, try to get together and they come out, oh, sorry, we couldn't figure it out mm. or we couldn't come to a compromise, you know, we couldn't resolve it. So there are ways to do that. There's a science to it. It's, this is not a mystery. Mm. And so the problem is we have not been intentional in bringing this into our schools. So the, you know, the conversation right now on the cutting edge of education in, in the country is what are those skills? So basically we believe that you know, academics are important, right? But the, the foundation under which academics lie are what we call soft skills. Soft skills. Those are the communication, the critical thinking, the problem solving, the listening, you know, the collaboration skills. Now, and, and what makes you a good collaborator, a good communicator? You, I just don't tell you, go out and be a good communicator. Right? It's, it's not, it doesn't work like that. You have to have good social emotional skills, right? So interpersonal skills, understanding yourself, empathy, you know, perseverance, resilience, all these other skills help you build these communication skills. And the good news about all this is, you don't have to have an extra course to teach them. Hmm. You embed them in your science, English, language, you know, whatever it is. In the culture of the school. In the culture, in the culture of the state. Now, I'm in glad culture, you said, yeah. I said culture, because <clears throat> New Jersey, we, one of the things we're really trying to bring out is that every school mm -hmm. should have its own culture. Right? right now how do you do that well it's simple every school should be a mirror of its community right so in Newark you're a mirror of Newark right. Camden's totally different you're a mirror of Camden right. out here different mm -hmm. we get it and the good news is New Jersey is completely set up for that we have 586 school districts you look at yes exactly you look at that as from a business standpoint you go that's crazy right too many but actually no right we are we are teed up as opposed to, be, to other states, uh, because other they states, have less right. divisions, they have Correct. more. Uh, they have, they're bigger. The bigger the they, are bigger. They have more diversity, right. but the diversity isn't well, probably. We, we've got a lot of diversity, but yeah. we're teed up to be a place-based education model. A place-based. Right? Place place-based. Now, place-based place education has been around for since the '40s. You know, okay. the idea of using your community mm -hmm. as a framework for the way you teach 
the things you teach, mm -hmm. and the culture of your school. Mm -hmm. That's a place, and they say that makes the learning more authentic. And, and I think about when you say that, I think about you know the well-intentioned New Jersey Department, New Jersey Department of Education, and how they go into cities and they take over like Newark, Patterson, and, and they, they have this state down, uh, well-intentioned. Um, sort of will fix this horrible system when they don't take in consideration what many people don't want to acknowledge as a massive um, racist you know, system that mm -hmm. has massive injustices you know mm -hmm. and I think that you know when you look at slavery you look at 200 years ago and you look at the potential for you know you know acknowledging the fact that we still have reparations in some way to pay to some people now even, even if you completely disagree with that mm -hmm. I think that if it's place-based and after you have the Department of Education and you have the local people you need to have a compromise between where the funding comes from mm -hmm. and the people who are running it with their children right mm -hmm. and I feel like that's the rub mm -hmm. when it comes to some inner-city education mm -hmm. and I did four years in Newark as you know I did the urban farm and um, I think that, you know, from my experience, it was it was such a like change the world awesome experience. But I see all these students going through these systems where we're we're educating them to a test that is not necessarily and in many ways is going to be not detrimental, but definitely not helpful to them mm -hmm. because they don't yet have the social emotional skills, the nutrition, mm -hmm. you know, the the, the safety, the yeah. safety and nutrition. We're talking about you know uh, the hierarchy of needs here, right? We're talking about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. They're not even you know clean clothing, you know, uh, food and and safety provided. Mm -hmm. Now many of the people in Newark and Patterson are very well. Mm -hmm. And many of my students we had doctors as parents, but I do think that unfortunately the vast percentage of them were not. Mm -hmm. So I think about that, and I think about you know, I mean, I want to go home, you know, hey, take care of my family and and put bread on the table. Yeah. How am I going to process that huge idea of change the world? Oh, you got to stop talking because you're, you're, it's too, it's too much. So mm -hmm. how do we have that tiered approach mm -hmm. where we have this place based education mm -hmm. and we have this awareness, mm -hmm. this this awareness of social education, of social mm -hmm. emotional and the soft skills, but it's 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 digestible mm -hmm. to the people who we're trying to help mm -hmm. change. Yeah. Because I think a problem that happens is when you have people that want to make change, they they, they take that macro view mm -hmm. and it overloads people. Mm -hmm. and you need to have that. Okay, it's 2017. Here's our six. Here's our 12 month goal. Here's what we want to do. And sometimes I feel like you shouldn't share the vision because mm -hmm. if you share the vision too much, people get overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. But I think that like where we are right now at the Willow School, I mean, you're you're carbon neutral, right? Uh, I wouldn't go that far, but that building has no electric bill. Okay, that building has no electric bill. Correct. And we're gonna do a tour in a bit, yeah. but so, and, and you have a cistern, right, mm -hmm. of two, 3,000 gallons, I mean something. We have uh, three, cisterns. three cisterns, the one behind you is 10,000 gallons. Okay. The two in the ground on either side of us are uh, 25,000, where we harvest all the rainwater and use it to flush the toilets. Can you say that again, How, what are the gallons? 25,000 on 25, either side, 25,000 under that parking lot, 25 under that, and yeah. 10 for that building. And there's some really state-of-the-art filtration systems so they get the cleanest water? Well, they come. Or... it all comes from the roof, and right. then it gets cleaned by ultraviolet light, and okay. then it goes in to, to flush the toilets. <laughs> so I just want to mention something about what you said before, about yeah. the, what we call the achievement gap, right? So uh -huh. your zip code right. should not determine how well you get educated. Mm -hmm. And we have an achievement gap out here. I mean, it, mm -hmm. there, there's, it's all over the place. And... And, and I don't I don't like going and saying we want to change everybody. We don't want to change anybody. Right. We want to transform it. Okay. Right. And we all we want to do is is allow every child to get a great education and pursue their dream and be themselves. We don't want to change anybody, right? We want to obviously up the system so that everyone goes has a great school, a safe school, good teachers, and has you know good food mm -hmm. and has opportunities to 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 learn and and to succeed right. and to have a life right and so um you know that that's that's important to know and you know testing is a big big uh, uh conversation right now mm -hmm. and it has as everything i've learned in in education has many many points of view so right. you know are we spending too much time on testing yes are we spending too much time on testing math and language arts? Yes. Do we need to cut that back? Yes. How do we do that? We're not sure yet. Mm -hmm. We have a requirement in the state of New Jersey to have a standardized test to graduate. That's mm -hmm. a law. Right. We have a law that says you have to use a standardized test as part of the evaluation of a teacher that teaches math and language arts in grades three through eight. Mm -hmm. We also have a law, a, a federal requirement in order to get our money from the federal government that we do test at least 95% of all subgroups in New Jersey. Okay. So these are things that are sitting out there. Right. Now, what does the test do? The test actually helps us pinpoint the achievement gap. Okay. So it shows us where that work is. Mm -hmm. And we definitely need an assessment or else we're not going to know whether we're delivering, you know, whether we're teaching what we're supposed to be teaching. Now, right. can you <clears throat> test social-emotional skills and 
and character development skills, I would say you have to be careful about that. I mean, you know, I think you should just do those. Right. It should be, and, it should be a given. Right. right. It should right. be a you given. You teach you how to love your neighbor, how to right. uh, care about the environment, right. how to, you know, communicate to yep. people who, yep. who see things differently. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yep. And, and so as far as testing, I, I, I teach science, right? And mm -hmm. I, I almost want more testing because I want to have sort of a, but, and it's a double-edged sword there. I want to have a, you know, a clear goal, mm -hmm. you know, to hit because science and the biology, you can go into yep. synthesis for the whole year, yeah, yeah. you know, so, and it's seventh grade I currently teach, but I think about, you know, and I think about my students who I hope will watch this and, and their parents and everybody else, uh, you know, whether you're 93 or three, I think you can, maybe not three, but many people can understand and appreciate what we're talking about. Uh, I want more testing because at, le at least some sort of more boiled down here's what you should do to be successful mm -hmm. and I know that you sometimes don't get that perfect roadmap in mm -hmm. life or in, in teaching especially but I mean if, if language arts and mathematics have these 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 really rigorous or what we hope are rigorous tests every year mm -hmm. in grades three through eight and it's a state law you know how can we make sure that they're also accountable and mm -hmm. more than prepare it in science I mm -hmm. mean you look at Switzerland you look at these these northern European countries like like Holland and Netherlands and mm -hmm. and, 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 and then you look at like some you know the Japanese and, and some of the extremely high achieving um, uh, countries in that area mm -hmm. and I think about they, they keep on touting how they don't do testing mm -hmm. and they let these students have this creative sort of uh, not free but 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 more this autonomous sort of um, Aristotle like you know uh, you know to teach out of you know demand I'm, I'm paraphrasing the quote is, is is foolish but but to to see the proclivities of each child and their, their bent oh, yeah, their, their whole their, child you know, yeah. their whole child we have to be very we careful go. when we compare ourselves to some of these European countries okay the United States is not Netherlands right and people will say well we should be doing what we're doing right. in Finland Listen, we're not Finland and, and, and what is the difference between this is it the homogenous population well, I mean, the is homogenous the... population the size I yeah. mean we I mean there's there's so many differences. So yeah. when someone comes to me and says, well, we should be doing what Finland like does. Singapore I mean, math or, right. Maybe, yeah. but guess what? New yeah. Jersey's not Finland. Right. The United States is not Finland. That's such a I good mean, point, yeah. And, and frankly, we have to do what works for us. Right. And you know, in New Jersey, we're one, two, or three in the country in education, depending whose yardstick you use. Okay. And so we are doing a lot of good work, but we have, you know, we, we've got our issues, and, and you know, we really want every school to develop their own culture mm. and climate that is unique to their community, and, and the research shows that when you do that, the absenteeism, suspensions, behaviors, mm. the test scores, everything goes, you know, goes in the direction it's supposed to go. Because they feel, I mean, they, they feel, they, a, they sense feel of purpose. a belonging and purpose, right? right? They have that basic, yeah, hope. I matter. Right. right. And what I'm yeah. learning right. matters. Right. I get so many students to ask me, like, <laughs> you know, am I ever going to use this? And if I'm honest with them, and I'm, we're talking about some <laughs> advanced whatever, yeah. I'm like, actually, you're not. <laughs> And they're like, well, why do I do that? So, well, the theory is that by learning that, it helps your mind, right? right and right. that's okay. Problem solving. Right, that. right. And that's good. We <laughs> want to be able to problem solve. So, you know, right now, I think we're at a real tipping point in education in this country. And we're really, you know, we had the Industrial Revolution model. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all about information and content because information and content was very hard to get back then okay. in my day. You know, I had to go to the encyclopedias. You had to go to the library. And the information and content you needed to be college and career ready your destination mm -hmm. in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, it stayed the same. Here's where you're going. That's mm -hmm. the job you're going to get. Here's the information you need to be successful in that job. Mm -hmm. Put it down on the test. Be on your way. Good luck, right? Yeah. Today, my 16-year-old daughter can get all the information and content she needs by pressing a button, right? And guess what? The job she's going to go into probably doesn't exist right now. And if it does, right. it's going to look totally different, right? So knowledge and content is not going to get you to that be successful in that job and you know you can have all that knowledge and content I tell the students all the time but if you can't communicate you're not getting the job and I think and if you can't yeah, yeah. work I mean when I went to when I went to work mm -hmm. we all work by ourselves hmm. who cares about communication really right. today if you can't work in a team and by the way I tell the students that team's not gonna be your friend group and probably gonna have people that you don't even like on it mm -hmm. and if you can't get along and understand how to work in that team mm -hmm. you're gonna get fired right, right? right. so those skills are much more critical than you know advanced geometry. Yeah, I just now, if you want to be a mathematician yeah. or a nuclear scientist, knock yourself out. Right. Go, go content, for it. Go, deep, go, 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 go AP. Right. Go, you know, right. go right. specialize in college. But, That's great. But the majority of us are going to have some massive. We, we need these collaboration basic skills. Teamwork. And when you yeah. walk out the door in twelfth grade and you land either in college or career or whatever, mm -hmm. and if you talk to the business community, they they'll tell you the kids that are landing on their doorstep, whether they're out of college or high school don't have these employability skills, right? If you look at most job applications these days, 80% mm -hmm. of it is soft skills. How well do you soft. work with people? I think that's so important. 80% 
of the skills that are that most most potential employers are looking at. They're looking is soft, for, skills. soft skills, communication, yeah. social, emotional awareness of yourself. The and company others... can teach you. Yeah, the, the, the product. You right. can learn right. the product, right? Yeah. And that's you, memorization. That's content, yeah. right? Right. You, but you can't you can't just become a good communicator. So right. these skills are critical, right? So that's that's what we founded this school on mm. was we found it on communication and on ethics. What, is an, what does it look like to have an ethical relationship with another human being? Mm. What does that look like? Right. And you know, if you look at, again, the current landscape on how we interact, we've gotten to a point in our society because we have not helped our students understand how that works, where we don't know how to treat each other well. Right. And we don't. We don't, you know, respect, integrity, honesty, wisdom. You know, these are all things that people think are important. Now the conversation is, what do those things look like? Right. What is responsibility? What is respect? That's where you start having conversations with students. And it right? can fluctuate from culture to culture yeah, slightly, totally, but there's probably some core totally. oh, yeah. tenets that yeah, run throughout the world. Exactly. All. Yeah, and I think about what you're saying, and I think about, I mean, I, I'm a big thinker, I think about war, I think about strife, I think about struggles, whether you look at the Middle East or Africa and famine and lack of food and you know, the Syrian civil war. And was that, was that a, a war based upon lack of water? Was that a significant factor? And I think about you know, all the things you're talking about, and I think respect, I think, I, I just think about how how can we teach that? How can mm -hmm. we teach how to interact? And what does a respectful relationship look like? Mm -hmm. And when I see students, I want to uh, answer your point or, or talk to your point about memorization. And th th that's the base of Bloom's taxonomy, mm -hmm. right? Do you know that you know we have, we know that there's well, we know there's 16 subatomic particles, but for middle school maybe it's these three: proton, mm -hmm. neutron, electron. Okay, that's easy. Mm -hmm. that, that that should I mean memorization. If you think you memorize the vocab and you spit it out in the test, great. So can a computer. You want to be employing the computers or controlling them, not the not the reverse. Right. And and I think the, I think about you know I think about communication. I think about how we're so globally connected. Again, it is overwhelming sometimes when you turn turn on the TV and you hear this. You know, if it bleeds, it reads, as Bill Clinton says, it bleeds, it reads, and that's how you get all like the viewers. Or mm -hmm. you know, and Tony Robbins says news is just to you know keep you hooked. But I do think it's a fine line between being aware of what's going on mm -hmm. in the world, taking action, tiered mm -hmm. reasonable steps. Here, mm -hmm. the, here are the not overwhelming reasonable steps we can take, <clears throat> and, and making that progress. Um, and and I think that <clears throat> your school, although I've never viewed a class, I and mean, I've been to the gala, but mm -hmm. I, I think that your school has is, is really. I don't even want to say hope. I want to say like faith. Like it, this is what it should be, mm -hmm. at least for this community, like you said. Mm -hmm. And but I think that solar, wind, geothermal. Mm -hmm. I think that appreciating, and I think a lot of people don't say this. Fossil fuels are ingenious, mm -hmm. right? They are ancient sunlight. Right. The, these organs have been crushed and, and, and heated. And if, when you demonize the enemy, like Mandela says, when, when, when you no longer talk to your enemy, the, you make them more your enemy. You need to learn how to collaborate, communicate with people who might look at you and really hate your culture, or, mm -hmm. or just at least disagree with you at work. Mm. You know. And I think that when you collaborate with your enemy, they become your friend. And I think that we need to do that more. We need mm -hmm. to say fossil fuels are great. A lot of our retirements are tied up in these things, mm -hmm. right? Coal, oil, 